It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to Gordon Harrison, who will share with us 10 hands-on tips for streamlining EKYC. Over to you, Gordon. Thank you very much, JP, and welcome everybody to this session. Um, great to have so many of you on board. And just a, a, a quick thank you to the FinTrail team for uh, inviting us to uh, present at, at this week's uh, FBCon. Um, it's been a, a great session that we've been able to put together to you for you today. Um, it's going to be an interactive session, so I'm going to run through um, a number of different key topics of conversation. Um, and also open up the floor to a Q&A session at the end. Um, I'm just going to share my screen so that we can get straight into it. Okay, here we go. All right. So um, today's session is focused on the top 10 hands-on tips for streamlining EKYC. Um, to give a, a bit of an introduction to myself, uh, my name is Gordon Harrison. I head up the sales team here at Jumio in the EMEA region. Um, I've been at Jumio for just over four years, working with our, our top clients in financial services within the, the UKI sector um, to be able to help them to optimize their verification process, to streamline the onboarding side, um, to become more digital organizations. Um, and the session today is going to focus on that topic of uh, typical account onboarding processes, um, trends that we're seeing in the market, how we can look to improve upon those uh, processes that are already in place. And then I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of, of Jumio and some uh, hard hitting case studies that we've been involved with uh, over the past couple of years and really bringing to light the lessons that we are out in the market evangelizing. So getting account onboarding rights. Um, as with all good presentations, I wanted to start with some statistics to really frame what we're talking about here and why it's such an important topic of conversation. It's not just COVID that has brought to light the need for um, digital onboarding and verification with the closure of branches. This has been a trend that we've been seeing rise, especially within the banking sector within the past couple of years. So. Um, some really strong stats here from, from SignaCapt and, and the financial brand. Online account opening makes people 55% more likely to apply. 49% of all new bank accounts in 2018 were opened by millennials. 61% of individuals who opened a new credit card did so digitally in 2018. And credit cards are the most common type of new account opened on the web or mobile and 72% of consumers want an all digital onboarding system. Now for millennials uh, with the likes of Monzo and other digital banks, this might seem obvious, but to the tier one banks who have typically relied on in-branch account opening processes, verification of documents through a physical, um, physical meeting in branch, th this is still new. Um, to see those percentages rising, to see the expectations of customers um, to be able to, to verify and open up their account online sitting at home um, used to be a luxury. Um, now it's a necessity. Uh, companies and banks and financial brands cannot grow without the ability to capture and acqu acquire customers um, from the comfort of their own home. So what does a, a typical account opening process look like? Um, now, it seems to be pretty straightforward. It's uh, an application form where you would look to provide data based on yourself. It, it would be uh, an identity verification. So capturing a photo of the person's ID, an approval. So yes, you have been approved. You have passed a verification process. We know who you are and then proceed to an account login. That is a typical account opening process um, that you would see across the board. Um, unfortunately, what that happy path looks like is not so much so in, in practice. 56% um, of, of online bank account applications in the UK were abandoned due to a, a long process or a complicated enrollment process. Um, 
there's a, a, a slide which we use at Dreamio, which showcases some of the financial institutions um, where it can be up to 13, 14 steps of various different types of data being captured, different documents, not being prepared for what is coming next, not educating the customer around what they need to do or why they need to do that. And compare that to the likes of uh, the Monzos out there who have really streamlined this process and brought it into only three or four screens um, whilst also maintaining high rates of, of fraud prevention. And that is exactly it. That is the trade-off that we are always looking to address. So um, th this graph clearly shows, I, I guess, the, the trade-off between what is fraud detection, so understanding whether there is um, an impersonation attack on, on somebody who's not who they say they are opening up a bank account versus converting and acquiring customers. Brands in the market who have driven growth, acquired customers, um, have perhaps been more lax around the fraud detection side. Typical tier one banks who still require you to go to a, a, a branch to open up an account, even if that is a more complicated account like a savings or, or mortgage, yes, it has high fraud detection, but the conversion of those customers is low. So being able to reach that state of, I guess, what we call Nirvana, um, the trade-off between am I detecting fraud and can I convert the good customers? That is what we, we look to, to work on. And that is what the, the tips over the next um, 20 minutes or so will look to focus on. So top 10 tips in terms of streamlining the EKYC um, and, and how we at Jumio um, are providing thought leadership and, and experience to the market on, on how we believe, um, having integrated our solution, um, believe that we can uh, capture customers and detect fraud. So the first point is coverage. Um, th there's no doubt in our minds that um, we live in a multicultural, multinational uh, society where um, banks in the UK are, are opening up um, opening up bank bank accounts for for people of, of all different origins and, and coming in for, for work visas, etc. Being able to make sure that we can verify anybody and everybody uh, for that institution is absolutely key. It's key to making sure that we can make the uh, process streamlined. It's key to making sure that we acquire um, all types of, of persons. And you know, in terms of a statistic, uh, we know that the account ownership is, is on the rise. 69% of adults have a financial account, and that's up from 62% in, in 2014 and 51% in 2011. Um, so coverage is absolutely key. Um, when we look at what we mean by coverage, we mean what are we looking in terms of identity documents? So IDs that include passports, driver's licenses, um, ID cards, whether that be plastic or paper. There is a, a unique position in, in Italy where, for example, um, the paper driving license, which is a official form of, of government issued ID, um, was issued 20 years ago in a paper format and does not have an expiry date on it. So, um, you know, banks in, in the region are, are challenged with the, the fact that they are using old uh, documents that are particularly poor in terms of quality. They are paper based, um, but they do not have an expiry on them. So they are highly susceptible to fraud, but are technically legal to be able to uh, verify the person. So making sure that you can even cover those sorts of cu customers in an online format um, is absolutely critical. And that kind of brings me to my, my second point, which is being able to accept more document types. So um, you can see there a variety of, of documents that we, we have, 3,500 types of ID. Um, it, it's roughly maybe 10 per country when you take into account first editions, second editions, um, different types that we see. Uh, and, and what we cover here at Jumio is over 200 countries worldwide and, and three and a half thousand types of identity document. In addition to that, that's just focusing on, on IDs. Um, when you are looking to open up a more complicated account, an account that requires a higher level of due diligence, 
it's the supporting documentation that can be difficult to verify um, and capture. So we're talking about visas, we're talking about resident permits, uh, proof of address documents such as utility bills and, and bank statements. All of this type of documentation has to be captured, has to be verified, the data has to be extracted and analysed, um, hitting against certain local databases. Um, we need to be able to make sure that as a provider, as a, as a client of financial services, we are able to make sure that the user can go through that whole process, no matter how rigorous the due diligence needs to be from a regulatory point of view, um, fully online and, and digital. One of the other points that we see often uh, across the different channels that we have um, live and, and present in the market is auto capture. So um, th this, this being able to enable auto capture is, is much easier through an SDK on the mobile. Um, and, and where we see auto capture being utilized by our clients, we see a 30% higher acceptance rate compared to a manual ID capture. So um, on the web, uh, we have to create a manual ID capture based on the technology that we have available to us. But on the mobile, the automated ID capture not only makes it simpler for the user, um, but it also means that they don't need to uh, click any buttons, which makes the phone unstable. Um, we provide feedback to the user as to whether the image that they're about to capture or that the phone is about to capture is in good lighting, uh, has it detected any blurriness. The, Capture quality is absolutely fundamental to making sure that the, uh, the image quality is good enough for us to be able to verify. Um, and it also makes the streamlined onboarding process simpler. Um, as part of the capturing process, we would look to also draw out the data, um, make sure that it's a good image that's been captured, get rid of any glare, get rid of any blurriness. Um, just making it totally easy for the customer to, to get through the, the steps of, of capturing their ID. We would also look to present a frame. So it's obvious where the person needs to place their documents. So we're not receiving uh, images that are, for example, half cut or don't pick up the MRZ code, et cetera. More capture channels. I feel like this might be quite an obvious one, but if you're looking to acquire customers across a broad range of, of demographic, um, making sure that they can put, that they can sign up to an account through any channel that you provide is, is absolutely critical. Um, it is not just uh, the mobile device that we should be focusing on. Um, we should be also focusing on whether we need to access the, the onboarding process through the web or perhaps we need to send out links for the user to be able to verify themselves to their email or text that to their phone, um, any number of ways to interact. In actual fact, I was speaking with a client the other day and they were asking, can we integrate a solution whereby it's placed inside a chat bot um, so that we can have an integrated view to um, verify the individual through the chat bot and then be passed over to a customer service agent so that the identity of the user is proved before they, they touch an agent for, for a uh, account opening process or, or an increased due diligence process. Uh, and the stat there is, is, is quite hard hitting. I mean, just a third of desktop users complete the entire account opening process. Um, we know that it's also important to be able to make sure that people can start a process in one place and finish a process in the other. So we have the ability for users to switch between devices. So you can start a process on the web and finishing it on, uh, on your mobile. That might be due to lack of uh, camera, for example, um, and being able to have that flexibility to offer your customers um, is, is important when you're trying to look at the customer acquisition rate. Clear instructions. Um, I, I am the biggest advocate of this, and, and I'm sure people get pretty bored of me talking about it, but it's all about education. Um, if a user is walking in to a verification process and they don't know why they're doing it. They don't know how long it's going to take. They don't know what documents they need to, to use. They don't know um, what lighting they should be in. They don't know 
um, the response times that they should expect. All of these critical points of information um, not only provide comfort to the customer, um, but it means that they're prepared. And in our world, that means making sure that there is a minimal drop-off rate through the process. If I'm educated at the beginning to say, you must have one of these forms of identity document, the process is going to take approximately three minutes. So I know that I'm not gonna to have to run to that call or get on that bus. Um, if I know that I'm going to need to capture an image of my ID and capture an image of my face, then I'm not surprised when the, um, when, when the bank asks me to suddenly take an image of my face, which I may, not be, I may not be okay with. But if I know that at the beginning of the process, I've got a level set as to whether I want to go through it, uh, to whether I'm comfortable with it. And um, I know that I'm prepared that when I am asked, I, I, I need to do it from a, a regulatory perspective. And that's one of the also the other things around education is telling the customer why they need to do it. So there's a reason, you know, you need to do this to prove your identity. So we know who you are, so we can give you this account, so we can be, um, so you can be a customer of ours. Um, for, it, it's important that, that this is, is established at the beginning, that education screens are re-established throughout the process, and that at the end, there is a clear sign-off process to the customer around what happens next and, and why, why what's happened has just happened. Um, and again, on the screen, you know, research has found that making it easy or reducing effort goes further towards building customer satisfaction and loyalty than the conventional wisdom of delighting customers, um, i.e. make it easy for me to get your product. Um, that is what builds a brand. That is what builds satisfaction. And it's so critical in the verification side of things because it's one of the first points of interaction that the customer will ever have with your business. So yes, you are trying to stop fraud. Yes, you are trying to put through what we call intelligent friction to get rid of fraudsters who do not want to show their face or perhaps know that they've got a, a false document. Um, you want to convert the happy people and stop the fraudsters. The intelligent friction will do that through the limited amount of steps but making sure that the 98% of people out there, because roughly we see about 2% fraud on, um, on all of our, our transactions. And, you know, we've done about 300 million transactions in the last four years across different industries. And it roughly is about 2% fraud on average. It, it increases depending on what country and, and type of uh, type of client we have. Um, but it's all about making sure uh, that we're able to convert the customers, we can stop that fraud at the point of, of onboarding. Eliminating the unnecessary screens. I, I guess I just touched on it there. Y yes, there's a need for speed. Um, it, it, in the past, you would look to see a, an onboarding process take even up to a day um, is, is no longer a satisfactory amount of time to open up an account. And you'll be able to see on on the, the Red London buses, the advertisements from Tide and others who advertise how quickly you can open up a, a business account with them. That is the marketing strategy to grab new customers. So when it comes into practice, um, it's essential that we live up to that expectation. Can we, can we set up an account? Can we go through a verification onboarding process in under two minutes? Um, now, we'll come to it later in terms of how does that play out on, on the, the vendor's side in terms of uh, manual versus automated uh, solutioning? But we are always looking for two things, accuracy and speed. And for the customer, speed is important. Um, and and we, can, we can hide the mechanics of what's going on behind the scenes based on having asynchronous processes. But for the customer to have a very clear and 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 a clear direction as to where they need to get to in terms of opening our account, that is, that's important. And, and that's important to customer satisfaction. It's important to the brand. Uh, it's important to making sure that we're onboarding happy customers. Instant feedback. Now, we'll talk about things like a feedback loop, uh, making sure that users 
stay within the verification process, that they don't go through a process, are unable to be verified and have to come back to the process again to re-verify themselves, which is just a terrible customer experience. You want to be able to know at the point of capturing the documents or going through the liveness detection solution that if you've done it incorrectly, that you are told there and then. Um, we, we have the ability at, at Jumio to, to, to provide the customers with detail as to your document has been declined and this is why. Um, you've de we've declined it because it's not the right uh, side of the document, for example, that we need, or the document was too blurry, we're not going to be able to verify that on our back end, or it's not a document at all. Um, giving that detailed feedback in real time not only can boost the conversion rate of the customer, um, but it also keeps them within the loop, within the process, keeps them engaged, make sure that they don't drop out and never not never verified. I mean, it's a customer that's totally lost. Um, I, I was speaking to a client the other day and they said that 15% um, of the people who they applied, who, who applied to be their customer, were simply lost in the process because they they didn't hadn't got back to them as to whether they'd been approved or not because the vendor had provided a maybe reaction to, um, to to whether they'd been verified or not and that that doesn't work for for clients they need to yes or no yes I can onboard them as a customer no and course correct and you're if you're able to course correct within the customer experience by adjusting the images, giving immediate feedback, even better. And that, I guess, leads me on to the liveness detection solution. So making sure that an intuitive liveness detection solution is, is implemented. And, and importantly, it's, it's the certification of that. There are um, a couple of, of key vendors out there who are able to perform liveness detection. Um, and the key is, is that they've had strong penetration testing across hundreds of thousands of, of spoof attempts, making sure that um, a certified liveness detection solution is utilized, gives com comfort, gives peace of mind. Um, and, and it's communicating that, that security and the fact that, yes, we're taking an image of your, your face, but it is secure. We are adhering to the privacy regulations. We are making sure that this is not um, saved or, or, or put anywhere that it shouldn't, but it's in line with GDPR rules is, is incredibly important. When it comes to actually the process of liveness detection solution, uh, there's different ways of doing it, whether it be um, understanding the movement of uh, an image to be closer to your face, whether it be flashing lights in front of your face, um, different different clients like different things and, and um, what's important is that it's secure uh, that it's certified and that it meets the the regulatory demands for what is becoming an even more important bolt hole for future verification um, so for example being able to authenticate the user later down the line is all based on that initial identity verification. The process grows stronger with each authentication you do. So the process needs to be slick. Um, it can, should be able to be done on any channel um, and it shouldn't be um, invasive. The next two slides I have are, are talking about the manual review and, and where it's, it's, it's important. So, the title says reduce the need for manual review, but what we really mean is reduce the need for additional review. So um, a bin giving a binary decision back to our clients is one of Jumio's most important things. Maybe for us to provide a decision that isn't a decision is only going to increase abandonment, increase customer dissatisfaction, increase the amount of manual review on the client side, more people, more delays. Um, we pride ourselves on being able to make sure that we provide a yes or a no answer. And if we give a no answer, we give a reason reject code as to why that person has been rejected and how they need to be engaged for a, a subsequent verification. Um, any sort of maybe just provides um, the need for an increased KYC team internally 
Um, it will provide delays on the, the client, the customer side, which is what we talked about earlier around um, losing customers. Um, and that abandonment rate is, is you know, the worst nightmare for a company that is trying to grow or a company that is uh, acting in this new digital world where you can't just say uh, at a branch, wait for 10 minutes, that person is, is, is gone and there's multiple other options out there. But what about using human review? Well, we shouldn't be scared of it. it, it it's an incredibly important part of uh, verifying a user's identity. I mentioned earlier around the Italian paper driving license, our um, and, and the automated solutions that are on the market are not able to verify those sorts of documents that are of poor quality, that are old, um, that might be taken in uh, particularly poor lighting. Um, human review is still required to be able to make sure that the person's identity document is real, where we are unable to utilize technology on plastic documents, for example, or documents that we see very often and are highly tagged and we understand the security features. By utilizing expert human review, we're able to increase our accuracy we're able to increase the um, amount of customers that are converted and ultimately leads to a, a decreased time in, um, in, on, in onboarding because we don't need to have the fallback on the KYC team at Bank X um, to be able to look through it. The fully out, people are looking for a fully outsourced compliance solution and a fully outsourced compliance solution is one that blends automation with the expert human review. So this is, this is actually Jumio's process. Um, this is how we run it. This is how it looks like to the customer in its, I guess, most uncustomized format. But um, it is, if we just wait until it kind of goes a bit uh, around to the front, th this is what the onboarding kind of process would look like in its absolute simplest form for, for KYC. You're choosing the document, you're capturing the document, um, the documents are clearly uploaded with education given to the customer about what happens next. The liveness detection takes place. Um, it's again clearly uploaded. We move a bit closer to provide the liveness and there's an end screen to show that we're moving on to the next step. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. So a little bit about Jumio. Um, and what we do, how we do it, and how we utilize those 10 key points at our clients to not only enhance our, our current functionality, but um, are always looking forward in terms of a thought leadership perspective. So what are we, who do we do, what do we offer? Well, Jumia has a, has a platform. Uh, we have a, a, a KYX platform, which in our world is know your customer. Um, whether that be know your financial services customer or know your patient or know your um, uh, patient who is, who is receiving medical treatment or recruiting or uh, sharing economy. The, the, the KYC side applies to so many different areas. And, and across that orchestration layer that we have is, is an engine. Um, and that engine basically runs the Jumio solution. So uh, it's a platform which has award-winning UX and, and AI and AML um, introduced into it. Um, we are continuously focusing on, on the user experience and bringing in those 10 top tips to, to ensure ultimate customer conversion. We are continuously evolving and training our AI machine learning to enhance our identity proofing and ongoing monitoring uh, solutions. We provide custom workflows to many of our clients, decoupled products, screens, to ensure that we can fit all sorts of molds of, of onboarding um, workflows. And our coverage, as, as, as mentioned earlier, is, is worldwide. Uh, basically, the maximum I think it can get now is, is three and a half thousand, and we've reached that, that maximum. And of course, security, we are ISO 27K and PCI level one. 
we have what we call at Jumio bank grade security. Um, we are vetted by the banks. We are vetted by third parties. We are vetted by the regulators. Um, so bank grade security is an inapt phrase as to where Jumio um, places its, its security protocols. On top of this engine, we have a, an identity proofing layer. An identity proofing being establishing that the person is who they say they are at the point of enrollment. So at the point of onboarding onto a new solution. Um, we do that through various methods. And, and the beauty is that you're able to pick and choose what you want to use in order to verify that person based on the different levels and layers of due diligence that you might have from a regulatory perspective. So whether that be performing ID and identity verification using the physical ID or the biometric side on liveness, whether that be adding in address validation, you know, does that address exist? Does that person live at that address? Fraud signals, so a risk engine, blacklists. Um, have we seen this ID before? Is it on the dark web? Connecting into local databases, using that additional data to supplement um, the, the, the core verification process. Signals, so are they using an email? Where is it coming from in terms of the phone? What is the IP address mapping to? Having that rounded view of, of is the person who they say they are? Are they using the right devices? Have we seen them before? Do they live here? Have they been there? Um, this is the way that we're able to perform a, an orchestrated view of, of is the person who they say they are at the point of, of, uh, of enrollment. And then ongoing monitoring. Establishing that the person is who they say they are more than once. Authentication, using biometrics to recapture the liveness of detection of the, of the user. That might be triggered by, I am on my account and I'm suddenly using my account abroad. Okay, I want to make sure that it is you buying that, um, buying that croissant at that cafe. Um, you've taken money out of your account. Before I just release that, I want to make sure that it's you. I'm putting in that trade, um, which is higher than what you we've seen you execute over the past year. I'm just going to make sure that it is still you who owns that account. Account takeover is huge, and this is where ongoing monitoring is a key part. Transaction monitoring, Jumio recently acquired a company uh, to be able to, apply, to provide that called Beam. We provide a trans transaction monitoring globally uh, to be able to watch, uh, watch those transactions, make sure that they're not risky, and, and the fact that we're able to, to track those within the same platform is hugely valuable. And then finally, AMR screening, um, whether that be PEPs or sanctions uh, or adverse media from an initial perspective, but also more importantly, from an ongoing perspective, real time updates to our clients as to whether that person has um, become a risky client. And this direction that, that Jumio has taken is it is fueled by our, our customers' input as to where they want their, their compliance partner to be. And it's something that's been uh, noticed by Gartner. So vendors need to decide whether they're going to be the orchestrators or simply be orchestrated. Jumio is an orchestrator. Um, we have mastered the uh, core verification solution upfront in enrollment, and we are branching into the platform side, which is where we see uh, the value of being a strong partner to, to our clients. So where are we differentiated? Um, we have more ID types. We run on more platforms. We are definitely more accurate. Um, for example, on audited results based on third parties, we are 99.95% valid customer approvals or valid customers are approved and 95% of invalid customers are rejected. Um, we support more countries, more IDs, more geographies. Um, we are not just a European country. We are global. Uh, we have large operations out in America and APAC and, and LATAM. Um, we have operations all across Africa, um, the Middle East. So companies look to choose Jumio when they want to scale, when they want to grow up, when they want to really understand um, what it takes to be an international company and trust that we can provide that sort of service. Our security team is consistently focused on meeting the highest regulatory standards. 
most recently with our ISO 27K uh, and renewal of PCI level one. Um, and it's not just the FCA we're listening to, we're listening to all types of regulators, FINMA, the ones in, uh, the various ones in uh, Asia, in Hong Kong and Singapore, working and consulting with them as to what are the best security practices for, for PII data. And then technology. We are at our heart a technology company. We have developed proprietary technology around AI and machine learning. That is the driving force behind us making uh, the right decision at the right time on whether that person is who they say they are. We, we've verified 300 million people. We have a huge amount of data to be able to learn and train. Um, and we are reaching a point where um, we are consistently every day learning so much that is fed back into our, our AI machine learning um, that our clients and our customers benefit from in terms of quicker response times, in terms of more automation. We are the industry leader, as I mentioned a few times, 300 million verifications done to date, over three and a half thousand ID documents um, supported. We've got about one and a half thousand employees globally across the broad the board. Um, we were the first in the market to pitch a government issued uh, ID paired with a corroborating selfie and took that to the next step to, to uh, the ongoing side and the authentication. Um, and we are consistently in the news for innovation, for thought leadership, um, and for pushing the boundaries when it comes to uh, compliance, when it comes to using technology in new ways to make sure that the person is who they say they are. Just a few brands we work with. Um, Jumia runs a partnership model. You know, we're, we're interested in long-term strategic partnerships. We're interesting in, interested in understanding what our customers want, consulting with our customers through client boards um, and, and adapting our roadmap to, to what they feel is, is important to them. We've done that across all of these brands on this page, whether it be tier one UK banks, payment and transfer companies, digital banks, um, the enterprises and the large crypto exchanges, and also the sharing economy, um, the likes of Airbnb and Daimler and Volvo, et cetera. A couple of case studies to finish, and then I'm gonna open it up to the floor. Um, I'm just gonna talk very briefly about three of our, our, our longstanding and, and, um, and great customers that we have. The first one being Monzo. So, so we started working with Monzo um, three, four years ago now, I think. Um, and for us, it was uh, important that we were able to adapt the Jumio solution to what Monzo wanted in terms of UI and UX, because um, they had a very clear view as to where they wanted the brand as a new digital challenger bank to go. Um, we were able to provide 80% uh, of their verifications to be verified within 150 seconds, 95% you know, within that 270 second. We were able to reduce the amount of abandonment that they were seeing during the account opening process. But for us, it was drawing on all of those key points we've talked about, being able to cover as many people as possible as a digital challenger bank based out of UK being able to comply with tougher KYC and, a and AML regulations. Um, speed was critical, accuracy was critical, and we were able to, to mold our solution to make sure um, that with a bank grade security, we were able to provide that Nirvana state between detecting fraud and converting customers. Paysafe, um, long-standing customer of Jumio, um, very much focused on streamlining, streamlining their digital onboarding process. Th their focus was on conversion. Uh, conversion and making sure that they could um, better the customer experience, which at the time was too clunky for what their digital needs were. Um, and being able to see that dramatic increase in speed allowed them to dramatically increase the amount of customers they were able to onboard. Um, you know, meet, meet their board requirements in terms of customer acquisition um, and verifying customers within seconds, not minutes or hours. And being able to do that, not just through a web platform, but a mobile platform as well, with the ability to transfer between the two. And then, although not a, a financial services company, um, 
we have um you know recently partnered well, a couple of years ago i guess with rappi which is one of the largest um delivery uh, companies out in latin america who also have a, a digital arm digital banking arm to the their platform um we're talking um running a solution in a very tough latin american market with high fraud rates um where users are capturing documents um in particularly poor light where we're looking to verify users who are often wearing helmets because they're part of a delivery um all of these really difficult um environmental scenarios we are able to adapt to to be able to reduce their onboarding time by up to 75 percent and importantly reduce fraud they were seeing a lot of it duplicated accounts account takeover which meant that insurance was void um, and, and it just showcases the importance of having that ongoing monitoring part to the um to the solution to the armory when you're working with a, a compliance partner because you will in time not only need to know that the person is who they say they are at the point of application but continuously know okay, he is starting that trade. He is opening up a different uh, product line. The, all of these points, you need to reestablish who the person is, reestablish the identity. Um, and in the case of Rappi, we, we were doing that across millions of people in, in a very tough market in Latin America. And I think it showcases very, very well that how Jumio has, has adapted and, and uh, excelled at, at, the, at the challenge. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, 45 minutes on the 10 key learnings from making a, a user onboarding process more streamlined, more effective um, and, and more efficient, as well as some commentary around Jumio um, and touching on some of the use cases where we have worked on. I will now look to stop the sharing of my screen and open up to some questions. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, let's have a look to see uh, what we have in the Q&A. Uh, cool. This is actually quite an interesting question because I actually don't know the answer. Uh, question is, hello, uh, do you contend with websites which create fake documents? Um, and do you liaise with law enforcement at all? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So, um, we have a 100 person product office out of Vienna who are continuously looking at how we are able to determine whether documents are real or not. And, and part of that is understanding what fraud documents are available to the, on the dark web. Um, we know that there are different technologies out there which have been able to spoof um, people's faces to get them to move around to be able to quickly adjust a digital copy of a document. Um, and so we are in contact with those types of companies to make sure that we understand what data sets they have so that we can feed that into our risk engine. So that if we see the same or similar types of documents or images coming through our solution, we've already picked it up before we even have to make any decisions or start any work. Um, that was part one of the question. Part two of the question, JP, remind me what that was. Uh, do you liaise with any law enforcement? Yeah. So, yes, um, we liaise with law enforcement on a case by case basis based on local regulatory environment. So here within the UK, we uh, are in consultation with uh, the Met Police around certain databases. Um, for example, in Hong Kong, we work very closely over there with the law enforcement um, because they're closely tied to the regulatory environment. Um, the law enforcement provides certain access to databases, uh, which we are able to tap into. Um, but more importantly, it's just consulting with them as to what they feel um, is important to them, because at the end of the day, they also help to shape upcoming regulations. And it's important for us to be on top of that before they come out. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned 270 seconds as an example of how long it took to onboard a customer. Assuming they were a difficult customer, do you include SLAs in your agreements? Great question. So uh, I can answer that one quickly. 
Um, yes, we include SLAs within our contracts. Uh, we include 80% of all verifications to be done within 150 seconds and 99% within 270. But those are contractual SLAs that we never break. So what does that look like in real terms? Junio are verifying about 300 to 400,000 people every day globally. Um, our average response time for our hybrid solution um, is 56 seconds. Our average response time for our purely automated solution is five seconds. So depending on um, what type of customer you are, depends on what type of um, solution you would look to use, but certainly within financial services, the hybrid solution is preferred. So a sub one minute response time on average is, uh, is yeah, the standard. Uh, this was actually mentioned at a session earlier today, so it'd be quite interesting, uh, or at least referenced. The housing market uh, is extremely paper-based. How do you think EKYC could be used to making the purchases of homes smoother, yet still avoiding the risk of money laundering? Great question. Having uh, gone through exactly that process not 12 months ago, it took about three times as long as it should have done with many trips to a lawyer's office. Um, the housing market is driven uh, quite heavily by regulation at the moment, and we are working with the UK government to actively working with them on consultation papers to change that into a digital process. Um, only when that changes will the likes of the um, estate agents and law firms be able to uh, adjust the process. So we are proactively looking to change that legislation with the UK government at the moment. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, a question from Kirsten, what type of databases are you connected into? Are they text-based or do you also have access to images and biometric and bio biometrics, sorry? Yeah, um, so biometrics is, is a good one. So there are various databases that we, uh, tap into in local markets. For example, um, in Africa, there are bank verification numbers that are provided. Where having access to that bank verification number gives you access to an image of the ID as well as an image of that person. We're able to look at those images and um, analyze whether they match what we have captured from, uh, from our side as, an, as a way to en enhance the due diligence process. Um, in terms of accessing other databases, we are more focused on the address validation and verification side. So does the address exist? Does the person live at those addresses? And then on a case by case basis with our clients, we would look to access local databases to support them. Um, and that's part of a Jumio partnership model is um, we have an agile and ever moving product roadmap. Um, so if our, our clients are, have specific needs, we will listen to them and reach out and connect them to where they want us to be. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, also, like get, get the fact that you wanted to showcase uh, some of your big ticket clients, if you will. Uh, but do you have any case studies or success stories of smaller firms that have partnered with Jumio? Of course, of course. Um, even if you were to think about Monzo, they were tiny when we started working with them. Uh, and this is the, uh, the the beauty, I guess, of the fintech industry at the moment is that 50% of the clients that I showed you today, we started working with them when they were putting through 500 verifications per month. Now they're putting through 500,000 verifications per month. So our approach to partnering and scaling our business is to work with businesses that we believe um, would really uh, value our solution and help them grow. So by no means do we, do we not work with small businesses. Um, a lot of remittance companies we work with are small and scaling. Um, a lot of the um, mobility customers, for example, are small and scaling. So yes, although we hold up our our biggest customers on slides, we have 800 customers um, and 30% of them fall into a small to medium business bracket. Great, thank you. Um, one last question from the floor before I get involved. Uh, is it possible to provide identity validation via a chatbot? 
yes is a is the answer um we are working with a a, a established fintech here in the uk at the moment on doing exactly that so they want to be able to establish the person's identity through the chatbot uh, before they um get put through to a call center so we have and are integrating our solution to capture an image of the id and perform the liveness check through the chat bot box um, to mean that they don't even need to, to leave the, the box and we can grab them as a, as a customer and provide the best possible experience. So the short answer is yes. And I think you're gonna start seeing that a lot more. Fantastic, thank you. Oh, and one just popped in. NFC is an interesting technology. Are Jumio speaking to governments about accessing their biochip certificates? Great question. We already do that. So um, as part of our solution, we provide uh, NFC on all documents which have an NFC chip. Um, so for example, utilizing both Android and Apple devices, because they've just opened it up, we can now look to uh, NFC the data from a passport, which is a purely automated pro um, process and is 100% accurate because defrauding NFC chips is basically impossible. So where clients have the ability to ask their customers to verify themselves using a passport and using an NFC chip, it is always encouraged because it completely deters fraud and it is the best possible user experience. Simply tapping your phone against the passport to access the NFC chip allows us to be 100% confident that the user is who they say they are. Cool, thank you. So yeah, we had um, a session earlier today on digital identity and what was uh, mentioned is obviously FATF's digital transformation project. Yep. So I was just curious as to what role you feel Jumio might play in that digital transformation piece and the future of digital identity. Yeah, it's a great question. And that session earlier was really interesting. Um, and particularly relevant to us as a company. Um, we know that digital identity documents are going to be trialed in the next coming 12 months, that they are going to be in circulation and that ultimately holding your identity on your phone is, and on your accounts is going to be the way forward over the next five to 10 years. Um, we have already established technology to be able to prove that that digital identity um, has not been defrauded and are proactively working with the people who are uh, providing them to the governments. So uh, that is an example of us being one step ahead uh, and in consultation with those relevant companies. We definitely see that that is the way the world is going to go. And in 10 years time, we're not going to be holding a plastic document. We're going to be having our digital identity on our phone that Jumio will still need by regulation and be able to verify. Uh, I think we've got time for one final question to entertain myself. Uh, we noticed uh, in the news not too long ago that uh, Jumio acquired Beam Solutions. Are you able to share any of Jumio's intentions around that acquisition? <laughs> yeah, sure. So look, Jumio is a, a growing company. We grow at 30 to 40% per year and have done over the last five years. Um, we are aware that we cannot build everything ourselves. So we have to go into a, an in, inorganic mode of growth. Um, it was a logical progression for us to move into the transaction monitoring world as we built out the KYX platform. And our acquisition of Beam um, was established a couple of months ago. Um, we are live and operating Jumio's transaction monitoring service already with various clients. We actually already shared a few quiet clients before we acquired them. Um, their products are live already in North America and Europe, um, and we are looking to fold this in as, as a core part of our solution and our offering moving forward. Um, the ongoing monitoring through authentication, transaction monitoring and screening is what is going to be required for all fintechs moving forward and Jumio wants to be at the heart of that. We are, as I mentioned, an orchestrator, not the orchestrated, hence you'll see various other products coming into the, the Jumio solution. Just uh, on that, 
you know, we recently partnered with uh, a key provider to doing video verification, so unassisted and assisted to be able to service the more stricter German financial services market. Um, another way that we're able to uh, service more clients. Fantastic. Thank you. So, uh, Gordon, I think that brings us to time. So thank you very much for sharing your top 10 tips and all your time today and also in preparing for this session. Hopefully you found today's session valuable and thank you for joining us and hopefully see you at the next session or later in the week. If not, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas.